Okay, 12, 22.35, let's get this show on the road. Um, I'm Seth Weil. Um, I've been an FC in Brave for many, many years. I've not been doing a huge amount of strat up stuff recently, but if you've ever seen a rock tackled in impasse, you've probably seen me hanging around up there. Um, the point of this class is to be kind of an introduction to FCing. The, the goal is to convince more people that FCing is not that scary. It's actually really straightforward to do in many cases. It's a hell of a lot of fun and hopefully we'll encourage more people to join. The format of this is going to be, I'm going to talk um, a little bit of an intro and talk about the various stages of a fleet and things to consider when you're doing it. And at the end, hopefully we'll have some questions and depending on how you guys feel, and how long it's taken, we could go out on a, on a hot potato fleet. So we go out on a roam. People who haven't kind of aligned fleets, warped fleets, communicate with scouts before, can have an opportunity to do that just to get, them, get the practice. Uh, first time I ever FC'd a fleet was in that exact scenario. It was with Lumpy Mayo back in the day. was running a hot potato fleet back when we were brave was in Barligat. And that's what kind of gave me the confidence to start leading fleets. So before we start, does anybody have any questions or should I just get straight into it? Can I bring my drink? Lead on. Awesome. Um, feel free to be anywhere in space for this. There is a fleet up under staff, so if you join that, um, I might link some things, and I've got some, some links in there that might be useful, but completely optional. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is why FCing? Why is FCing worthwhile doing? In my opinion, I'm honestly shocked more people in EVE don't want to FC. Um, as far as I'm concerned, FCing fleets is one of the most fun things you can do in EVE. You get a group of people, you get to test your skills against another group of people, um, you get to coordinate things, you get all the strategy, you get basically you're playing a real time RTS with real people being the players. Like, I'm so surprised more people don't do it. It is kind of scary to get started, but honestly, it's, um, it's quite straightforward once you get used to it. And people, especially in Brave, are incredibly forgiving and accepting of new FCs. So, more people should, should start. Not only is it fun, um, you also get your own content. If it's quiet and there's nothing going on and you're bored, you can take a fleet out, you can take a roam out. If there's someone gate camping um, a system around home and no one's killing them, you can take a fleet out and go kill them. Pretty much anyone who comes gate camps here, you can go kill. Uh, finally, you get free ships. So once you join the FC program, or if you join the FC program, um, and you can SRP your own fleets, you never have to buy a ship again because all the ships you lose will be SRP'd. So you can literally play this game and just do 100% PvP and never have to grind disc ever again. I mean, that's kind of a small part, but it's kind of fun just to consider you never have to buy your own ships again. Um, so in terms of types of fleets, um, there are three main types of three fleets or three main classes of fleets. The first one's kind of a home defense fleet. So that's, you guys in GE will know, gang of people come in, we form up against them, you go out and fight them. These are awesome because you know exactly ahead of time the numbers you're fighting and what their comp is. So you can make decisions about what you want to take and how many numbers you're going to have. Also, fighting on our home ground, we've got the advantage of jump bridges, we've got bookmarks, you know the lay of the land. Really, really good fleets to get started with. Um, that includes rock saves as well. Rock saves are just big, complicated, fast-paced home defense fleets. Um, again, super fun to do. Second class is a roam. So a roam is obviously when you go out and about. Um, roams are good because they're a bit more um, dangerous. You get to go to more sketchy places. Uh, downside of a roam is you may not find any content. Uh, when you when you take a roam out as an FC, I know I I when I'm FCing a roam, if I'm not getting any content, I feel really guilty because you've taken out a lot of people and you might not be getting them that many kills. Most of the time, though, people are pretty chill about this. People aren't blaming you as the FC; they're more blaming the world. Um, if you go to Gemini as well, go play with Pandemic Horde, you will always find content there because they're always up for up for a fight. Maybe more than you can handle though. The final type of fleet is the Stratop. So Stratop is a bit complicated ones. These are really good because there's a clear objective, kill something or defend something. And these are times when you normally coordinate with lots of other FCs, lots of other fleets. So once you've got a bit of practice, they're super fun for just like the different scale of FCing. And uh, keep in mind, there's maybe 10 FCs for any reasonably sized Stratop. It's not just the person on comms saying things who's who's in charge of things. Um, if you look at the fleet commands for any strat up, it's full of other FCs, and they're all doing useful stuff up there, for the most part. So you don't have to be pro grad legend to participate in FCing strat ups. Anyone with a little bit of experience can be really, really useful and be involved in there in a way you don't normally get to see as just uh, just a line member. 
Um, finally, how you become an FC in Brave. So anyone can FC in Brave. Um, you don't need any rules. You don't need any roles. You don't need any groups. You don't need any titles. Anybody can FC anything. A day one new bro, if you can convince people to come with him, can undock um, a nightmare fleet and go and kill things. Maybe the one exception for that is capitals. That's simply because losing capitals is bad, so we don't want to feed capitals. Anything else, crack on and do. If you can convince people to come and follow you, absolutely do it. You don't need any skills, you don't need any roles, uh, you just need to get people to follow you. Uh, anyone can send a ping, so please do get people to come, start having fun, start learning. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is uh, the, the various stages of a fleet. So what you do when you're moving through um, fleet combat. So the first stage is before you undock. So this is when you're sat in station and you're seeing what's going on. So I don't know how many of you guys know this, but if you're in a squad command, wing command, fleet command position, in the fleet window, you can click the horizontal lines top left and do a show um, fleet composition. Showing fleet composition will show you who's in your fleet. This is really important to know before you undock. You need to know what your lodging numbers are, your DPS numbers are, how many dictors you've got, that kind of thing. Um, you can also ask people to change ships as you as you need. So understanding what your fleet is before you undock will really help you later when you're making decisions about how much um, how much you want to engage a specific target or what your chances are of winning. So before you undock, you need to know what you've got. Keep in mind as well, your fleet will decrease in numbers as time goes on because you just naturally lose people. Okay, um, next thing to think about is uh, assigning roles to people. So in any fleet you're FCing, you're in charge, you're deciding what happens, but you need other people to, to help do things for you. So the most important one in pretty much any fleet is a scout. You need someone who has a microphone and has a fast ship. Now that doesn't necessarily need to be an interceptor. Um, it can be a T1 frigate, it's just something fast so that they can burn ahead of you, align quicker than you and jump back to gates. Um, second thing you may need is a lodge anchor. So if you've got lodgy, you want a lodge anchor. Even if you're not really anchoring the lodgy on something else, uh, which you don't always do depending on the fleet, you want someone who's going to coordinate uh, verbally on comms what the lodge is doing with you. Now this is really important because if you're FCing, it's hard for you to know how well we're holding, but an experienced lodgy pilot will know that because they'll be looking at that. They'll know whether you're winning or losing a fight and you can use that information to make decisions about whether you stay or run. Second in command, always useful. Um, worst thing that can happen in a fleet, and it happens all the time, is you land on grid, you're immediately headshot. Unless there's someone to take over, the fleet just kind of scatters and it gets scary. So just nominating someone to be, to take over when you die and having the fleet know who that is really helps. Uh, even if all they're doing is evacuating the fleet, having that person named in advance, super, super useful. Uh, E-War is a great thing. So E-War, as is said, I'll... Force multipliers, e war super useful. In Brave newbies, you're almost always going to get new bros in fleet. Make sure if you've got new bros in e war, they know what they're doing. So make sure you've make sure you've spoken to them individually. Make sure that they understand what their priority in the fleet is, how to pilot their ships, and tell them explicitly where you want them to apply their e war. Because if you don't, chances are they won't do anything, and, and you've missed out on a great uh, a great advantage in your fleet. Uh, what else? Oh, talking about new bros. Um, if you're undocking a fleet in Brave, just check. Do you have any new bros? It's, there's a good chance that any fleet you take out is going to be somebody's first fleet. So, assuming you're not in a major rush, make sure that they're, they understand everything. Uh, make sure you've identified them as someone who's new. Make sure they feel confident that they can ask you questions or, or ask you to slow down, just so we're not getting people lost. Because, obviously, there's a lot of weird lingo in, in, in FCing fleets that new people might not be aware of. Um, final thing before you undock is open dotlan. Figure out where you are or where you're going. Always have dotlan open. I always have dotlan open on a separate monitor, even in GE. The reason for this is you'll have people telling you system names, shouting them out. Um, you'll be maybe changing directions really quickly, going in a, dire in a direction you didn't under uh, didn't expect to go previously. Having a map open ahead of time is super useful. One of the most stressful fleets I, I ever ran was we were in cruisers being chased by Cinnables. And we, we were being chased into um, into an area of space I didn't know, and I was trying to run from them. 
not knowing where I was going. So I was just guessing systems to jump to, which was not fun. You want to be able to see the map. You want to be able to see what your escapes are, see where the pipes are, see where the dead ends are. So you can either chase bad guys into the dead ends or keep yourself out of them when you're running away. Any questions about what to do before you undock? You guys still there? Here. Yep. Roger. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, went a little quiet there. I was worried. I was worried I was talking to myself. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe soon. <laughs> okay, so next stage before you undock, um, you've got your fleet set up. You know what's in it. You know what you're trying to do. Um, second thing is actually moving the fleet around. So most important thing here is always have a scout ahead of you. Always have a scout. Ideally, an experienced interceptor pilot. Obviously, Vargrin is a great example of an amazing scout. Having Vargrin scout your fleets makes your fleet so much easier because he can give you good intel. Um, you know he understands what's going on uh, and he's not going to die um, immediately. He's going to be able to escape some hairy situations. So rule of thumb for FCing is never jump your fleet through a gate unless you know 100% what's on the other side of that gate. So always have a scout on the other side before you jump your fleet through because jumping into enemy fleets, especially ones you don't expect to see, is really dangerous. Um, likewise, if you're seeing the fleet, you never leave your fleet. You always, always stay with your fleet. Never scout your own gates, never warp off. Um, get other people to do that for you. Your job as FC is to keep the main fleet alive and safe, and you can only do that if you're on grid with them. If you're ever idling in space, um, waiting for something, aligned, align the fleet out. Um, failing that, if you're maintaining distance on gate, call the anchor, have them align around you. Um, moving fleets around relatively straightforward. You've all been on fleets, you all know how it happens. You figure out where you're going, you ask um, people to scout you, and you, you follow them through. Now the, the next stage is before a fight. So this is where a fight's about to happen. You've got two hostile fleets in the same system. Now, normally, this is where I think this is, I think this is the most important phase of a fleet. This is where the majority of whether a fleet wins or loses is decided. It isn't when you start calling targets. So it looks like the actual fleet fight is the important part when you're shooting at each other. Normally, by the time you've started shooting at each other, and particularly you've started like killing ships, it's already decided who's going to win and who's going to lose. The most important part is positioning yourself against the enemy fleet in the most um, optimal way for you. Now, this means that you need to understand what your fleet does, understand your optimal range, how much logic you've got, the range your logic can be at, um, your speed, your DPS versus the enemy, and positioning yourself so that you're applying more DPS to them than they're applying to you. Now, the way I normally do this is I have a lot of bookmarks on gates. So if I know my scouts told me, oh, this fleet is on whatever, the GE TAC gate in Victor 3, I'll first warp my fleet to a tactical off that gate. That allows you to look down at them, see them, and see what they're doing. And now one of two things is going to happen here normally. Either they're going to want to fight you, and they're going to warp on top of you, or they're not going to want to fight you, and they're going to run away. Now, either of those two is particularly good. I used to think when I first started FCing that you've got the advantage if you're chasing the enemy. So if, if, if I'm running and the enemy's chasing me, I used to think they have the advantage because I'm running from them. It's actually the other way around. Because if I'm, if they're chasing me, I know where they're going to be because they're going to be where I am, right? They're going to try and warp on me. Um, if I'm chasing them, I don't know where they're going next. So I'm, I'm always one step behind. Now that point there is really important to kind of be prepared. So the moment you land on grid with the enemy, call in a line. That could either be to a gate um, towards them, towards the enemy themselves, or to another gate so you can escape if you think they're going to land on you. You're always going to have enough time, unless they like literally decloak a dictator on top of you, you're always going to have enough time to warp your fleet out if you're prepared ahead of time. So if you've called in a line and you're, you're expecting them to warp on top of you, you've always got enough time for your fleet to escape before they jump on top of you. Um, but at this point, you've got a great advantage because you can set up probes to um, combat probe them down. You can ignore your own fleet and you can be communicating with your dictator pilots to position them. If you think they're going to run and you think they're going to jump through a gate, for example, you just put your dictator on the other side of them. They'll jump into the bubbles. You, f you come in behind them. They're scattered. A great opportunity to get them. Likewise, if you think they're going to warp to another gate, you can have a dictator pre staged up there. Now, that point there, I think, is where the most skills in FC comes in. And I think that's the most interesting part of the fleet. So things to think about are have as many tacticals as you can. 
If you're fighting in hostile space, you don't have any tacticals, get interceptors to burn them. Set up combat probes so you can warp on top of them. And probably most important of all, just be prepared to run away. Just always assume when you're FCing a fleet that at any minute, 50 bombers will decloak. And when 50 bombers decloak, you've got 12 seconds to react, which is more than enough time if you're prepared. So always be prepared that things might go wrong. So always be aligned out, always have an exit plan, always have an escape plan, and you'll be fine. It won't, it won't shock you. The way I do that practically is I always have my people and places window open. And when I land a fleet on a grid, I'll immediately choose uh, an exit. So if I wanted to escape, where would I escape to? I pick a gate, I pre-select a bookmark, um, a tactical off that gate in my people and places window. So I have it pre-selected. That means if something unexpected happens, like 50 bombers decloak, you can right-click warp, warp fleet to it without having to uh, think. You just do it because you already planned ahead. And that's the big difference between uh, getting your fleet out safe and not. Now, finally, um, you've done all this. You've done this little dance around each other. Now you're in the fight. So you're, caught, you're, you're at optimal range of them and you're, you're shooting away at them. The most important thing to do here, and this is probably the bit that really um, people I've seen for the first time uh, choke on first, is you need to call targets. Now, it seems obvious that you need to call targets, but it's actually really hard to call targets when it's all going on at once and you're trying to align and you're trying to anchor and you're trying to get your hardness on and there's a million things going on everywhere. Now, what I do here in this case is the first target you call is basically irrelevant. It doesn't really matter who it is. Just call someone. Just call anyone on your overview. Um, now, either you're going to get someone who you're not going to be able to break, which means that you now know you can't break them, or you're going to just kill something quick. Personally, I like to get Dictors first. Um, if you can kill a Dictor first off in a fight, that's great, because it means that if you lose a fight, they won't be able to attack on you. And if you win the fight, they won't be able to defensive bubble, so you can chase after them. Uh, they're also quite expensive. Um, Dictors normally fairly blinky kill mail, and they're pretty squishy. So first thing I like to do, before I even think about like what order I want to attack targets, just get all the Dictors dead. Once that happens, um, it normally takes you longer than you expect for people to get into orbit, get into anchor around you. Um, also, if you're FCing, uh, your ship will feel faster than everyone else's. What I tend to do if I'm anchoring cruisers, for example, is drop my speed manually to maybe three quarters um, full speed. That allows you to fly slower than everyone else. And it means that your fleet, rather than being a big line across space, which everyone's at different ranges, it clumps up a little more, which means everyone's in a lodge's optimal range and you're not right out front, maybe getting headshot. After that, it's just a matter of literally flying around, shooting at them, calling targets. If you're not killing things, change your target. If you are killing things, keep on going, and eventually they'll break. Um, things you'll learn as you, you get more experience is what you will likely be able to break ahead of time. And also, the, the most important thing is when the enemy fleet is going to break or when your fleet is going to break. So I remember one time I was seeing um, a, a cruiser fleet. It was a friend, a friend fleet in AX Star, like a friendly um, pre-range fight. I was calling targets until I was literally the only person left alive in my fleet. So I was calling targets and it was just me alive. And obviously they weren't dying at that point. One thing that's really hard is to know when you've lost critical mass, when you're no longer able to kill enemies and when you need to disengage. And ideally you need to know that before the enemy FC does. And likewise, before they decide to disengage, you want to know that they've already lost. Um, the best way of do I, I found to do that in my experience is communicating with the friendly um, Logi commander, the friendly Logi FC. So if you get them to tell you every time someone dies on your side, you already know how fast people are dying on the enemy side. You can then make a call pretty early into the battle. Are you killing them faster than they're killing you? If you're losing, you want to get away. Uh, the way you get away is you kill tackle, you align out and you warp. Simple as that. The sooner in a battle you can realize you're losing, the easier it will be for you to disengage because you'll have more people to kill them and they'll have less tackle to, uh, to hold you all down. Uh, likewise, if they run away, uh, you, you can do something about that. And if you can predict it ahead of time, all the better. So the final, the final phase of a fight, and this is how almost all fleet fights end, is one of you will run. Either you'll run or the enemy will run. Uh, and the better prepared you are for this, the better you'll do. In, in a good fight, you'll, most of the fleet will escape. Most of the fleet will just run away. And you can get most of the kills in this final phase by having dictators ahead of you, having your tackle ahead of you, in the direction they're going to run. So potentially um, 
if you can predict they're about to about to run away, get your dictors to to move to the gates they're going to go to. Put some catch bubbles up there. Uh, at that point, you can jump on them, get them killed. Uh, they're not going to be trying to fight you at this point. They're trying to run. They're trying not to aggress. So they'll be running away. Similarly, if you need to run away, you need to de-aggress, and ideally de-aggress before you leave grid. De-aggress, jump through gates, and have dictors behind you, defensively bubbling, so that they can't uh, chase you down. Once you've got one or two gates away, they're not going to catch up with you. Um, but that initial kind of run is really important. One thing to keep in mind as well, if you don't have a second in command and you're pointed, don't let the, don't warp the fleet off because you'll die and then the fleet will get get confused and it will it will get caught and it will die so they are the main four phases of a fleet fight um i've got a few kind of other things to talk about which are probably worth worth mentioning at this point um if you're interested in fcing for the first time which i hope you are um one really really good source of uh kind of community is on slack there's a channel called cop fleet command cop hyphen fleet hyphen command uh, that's a channel that anyone can join and it's just questions for how do i fc in this scenario what would you do against this um that's really useful for just getting started just understanding the mechanics of how doctrines work or understanding the mechanics of how you should be doing certain things there's loads of good people giving loads of good advice in there the other thing, after you've taken a few fleets out, talk to Shadow Dharma um, and talk about joining the FC program. You can come in as a junior FC. Uh, at that point, you can get access to a bunch of other channels, a bunch of other FC channels, which again is a really good community of of people who can give you advice or fittings. You can post fittings in a, in a window and say, "I don't understand how this doctrine works," or "How would you fight this type of ship?" And you can have a good discussion about it. Um, the one piece of caution I would give there is there's an awful lot of people in Eve who absolutely best intentioned like they're, they're not being malicious in doing this but they will give advice that's just wrong they don't know what they're talking about and they'll speak incredibly confidently about it so right now if you've never been on a fleet with me you don't know whether what i'm saying is sensible or whether what i'm saying is it is true just because I, I i'm saying it confidently um you need to make your own mind up about the people who you want to use as mentors the people who you think yeah this guy really knows how to fc a fleet and you learn that by literally talking to them um, and watching them and seeing whether they actually understand what they're talking about. Because it's quite easy to listen to a thousand people say a thousand things that are all just like slightly wrong and you're not going to learn anything. So I was really lucky when I started FCing. I had a few people. So Lumpy Mayo was a guy who really knew what he was doing FCing. Blue Ice really knew what he was doing. And W Rush really knew what he was doing. So having these people who I knew I could go to who weren't going to be dicks, who weren't going to just like talk a bunch of nonsense who i could say oh how do you fight mowers against auger and navy issues and you can learn from them learn how you'd anchor learn what you do so picking those people for you for yourself is really useful and at that point you can just ask them to um, backseat for you so if you're if there's a gang of tower wars comes in you want to fight them in some cormorants um ask someone if, if the rev for example is a really good fc you can say hey rev i want to take this fight would you mind backseating me what he's able to do then is provide SRP to your fleet, which means you'll probably get more people coming in, uh, give you advice, so he can maybe tell you, take that fight or don't take that fight, and that that by itself can be valuable. And afterwards, probably the most important thing, so I don't know if you guys have spotted this, after any kind of fleet fight that goes really wrong, so Rourke saves, for example, when we lose capitals, all the FCs go to Arch Command and we just discuss things, we just go through the entire fight and talk about where we could have improved, and that is really how you get better at FCing. It's retrospectively um, assessing what you did, why you won, why you lost, and how you could improve. Any fleet fight, there's always ways you can improve. And being conscious of them and, and, and kind of checking what you do to know how to improve is what takes you from being an okay FC to being a really good FC. Um, so that's all I had to say in my, um, my, my sprawl there. That was 25 minutes. Um, does anybody have any, any questions? Uh, just confirm anchor up. What is it and what's the normal range for that? Ah, yes, good call. So anchoring up is the way in which you basically fly the fleet. So normally when you're anchoring up, um, you'd be doing this in... An you don't do this in all, in all ships. You don't normally anchor in cormorants, for example, but mo most fleets you do. Harpies, mowers, caracals. This, this allows you to fly the fleet. So 
what you would normally do is you'd say anchor up people in the fleet will keep at range at u1000 or orbit u1000 500 it doesn't really matter people do slightly different things in different situations it doesn't really matter um you then fly your ship so you manually pilot your ship by double clicking in space to put the fleet at the correct range to the enemy now, normally what will happen here and again this is one of these things you can really tweak and practice and get better at is you'd have the dps anchor so you'd be flying the dps ships and you'd have a logi anchor they'd be flying the logi ships and the, the goal of that is you want to always keep at all times the dps ships between the enemy and the logi they're going to want to shoot your logi so you have your logi out of range you may be set on the edge of your optimal range and have the log your logi 30 kilometers behind you and you need to coordinate between the logi anchor and the um yourself the dps anchor to make sure that they maintain that position at all times being able to do that gives you a huge advantage because it means they can't shoot your logi without going through you first which means that all your logic can keep you alive while you're applying dps to the the enemy uh, likewise you're trying to position your fleet so that you can kill their logi without having to shoot their dps um you need to know to do this like effectively you need to know what your speed is compared to the enemy fleet speed you also need Oh, audio. Hello, sorry, you got me back. You're back. You're back now. Yeah. 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 So you need to know um, what your optimal range is versus theirs, and remember, you can normally change this by using ammo. And with missile boats, you can actually change your optimal range by whether you're flying towards or away from the enemy. So that affects things. If you're kiting the enemy away in caracals and they're chasing you, your optimal range goes up by about 20 kilometers. Likewise, if they're chasing you in in, in Tal Wars, their optimal range goes down by 20 kilometers. So the way you move your fleet really affects the amount of damage you can do and the amount of damage they can do to you. Does that answer your question? Works for me. Fleet tab has two more questions for you. Oh, sorry, I'm not on the fleet tab. Uh, let's. So first one, what's a good opportunity to warp to the primary fleet for optimal range? Is it better to be on the defensive or the offensive? Uh, it depends. So you want to be a aggr I like being aggressive in fleets. Um, if you're aggressive, you can kind of catch people off guard. Most of the comps we fly are micro war drive comps, except for mowers. I think mowers are the hardest doctor in the Brave has um, because they're AB. If you've got an MWD, especially early in a fight, you can normally disengage if you need to. You just pull range and then start killing dictators and interceptors. Uh, AB is a little harder. If you're an AB ship, you might want to be a little more defensive because once you're committed, it's a lot harder to disengage. I would probably say um, if you think you've got a chance of winning, if their numbers aren't massively overwhelming, go in close. But, but keep in mind that's not always warping at zero. So mowers at zero do almost no DPS. Mowers have no tracking bonus um, to their ships. So if you warp to zero with antimatter, you don't do that much DPS. You always want to be about 15 kilometers away from them. So. Keep that in mind. Zero is not the same as optimal range. All depends on the ship types that you're working with. Yep. Uh, your, um, yeah, the ship types, the ammo you've got, your tracking, their signature, your scan res, all these things factor into where you want to be. Uh, what, I, what I did a while ago was kind of spend a lot of time on the wikis looking at how the various damage mechanics worked for turrets and missiles. And then I built these really complicated Google spreadsheets to figure out how much damage you're doing at which points so just so you get a good feel of the theory of how tracking works because it's not that intuitive and um, it makes a huge difference to how you anchor a fleet so if you're trying to decrease or increase traversal and knowing what your signature radius is versus the enemy any other questions can i say there's something that i noticed uh, well, while participating in a multitude of fleets, is that regarding that positioning of uh, Logi and DPS, is that most times Logi doesn't regard pushers and that destroys your fleet because, you know, if you don't regard the pushers on the enemy fleet that are, you know, trying to take your Logi, you lose your Logi and it was your fleet so what i usually like to do when i fly logi is if i can i use a scram if possible 
Yeah, I mean, that's a really good a really good point. Boosters are awesome in fleets. Um, so the advantage a, boost, a booster gives you is not so much that it actually causes much trouble, because a logic can burn 100 kilometers pretty quick. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. What it does, though, is just cause chaos. If half, And it's not just logic. If half your DPS wing gets booshed off somewhere else, you need to now reassess the entire, like, oh, my God, I need to turn around. I need to burn towards them. They need to burn towards me. It can be devastating to an FC. The best thing to do in that scenario, though, is not panic. So this happens a lot. If you get half your fleet caught in a bubble or something like that and you split the fleet up, turn around and burn towards each other. You can cover 100 kilometers. Really, it's 50 kilometers each in not that much time. Um, don't panic is number one. Second it wouldn't thing be easier is, for them to warp off and warp back? I would say no. I'd say stay on grid. Because if they warp off and warp back, you don't know where the bubbles are at that point. If you can see that you've... Because it's only 100 kilometers, keep in mind. It's not that bad. If they double boost you, you could warp straight down to the FC. Um, the the be best thing to do is just not panic. And like I was saying about killing Dictors early, if you've got a command Desi who isn't shit, and most of them are shit, most of them will just miss, and who cares, ignore them. But if they are catching you, just prime them. Next time they come close to you, pop them. If you've got a decent-sized uh, DPS flight, a command Desi will explode. They don't have a lot of, a lot of, DPS, a lot of tank. Very good point. Though. Definitely something to be um, aware of. And again, something to be really um, t to, to use to your advantage. If you've got um, uh, Baller Tom, for example, in your fleet flying to Command Desi, he'll be off doing his own thing. He's great. He'll just set off and boost things. But if you can coordinate with him, if you can say, right, Tom, I'm going to warp down in here now um, when I do get the Lodgy off, that would be great because you'll warp on the enemy FC. They'll be focused really on tightly on you. Ten seconds after that, if he can boost off their logy, he's panicking. He's now worried about his logy. He's not calling targets as fast as you are. It gives you a huge advantage. Ah, there's a Bolotum boosting masterclass link down there. Yep, yeah, I've had Tom doing this in my fleet against enemies, and it's fucking great. Like it just destroys them. Uh, I have a question, real quick. Yeah, what's up? Uh, so let's say they lot of Sino on top of you. Do you need to stay there and try to pr primary that Sino off of there if you think you can, or do you need to escape right then? Um, if if someone likes to sign on you and your sub caps and you don't have cap support, what's coming through it is probably bad, right? What's coming through yes. it is is probably not good, um, because the only reason they do it is because they 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 can. I would say in that case, uh, if you're not in a bubble, just warp away, um, warp the fleet off, because you can always turn around and come back. If you are in a bubble, I would strongly consider disengaging at that point. The moment a signer goes up, assume that the, the tides are going to turn against you and think about disengaging as quickly as possible. Keep in mind, though, one of the weaknesses of capitals is they can't relocate grid. Subcaps can. So keep in mind, just because they've left a signer, that doesn't mean the fight's over. It just means a fight can't happen within 50 kilometers of that. If you move 50 kilometers away from that signer, which again, you're burning two and a half K a second, you can do pretty quickly. Um, any logy that they they bridge in, any faxes they bridge in, won't be able to rep anything that comes out of it. Carriers obviously can apply to you outside that range, but dreads won't be able to. Um, carriers won't be able to rep. They're lock if they sign it onto a grid, they're choosing that grid as a place they're going to stand. Move 400 kilometers away, and you can continue the fight. Yes. Having probes and having um, interceptors. So. If you see big strat ops, um, this is totally what I'd recommend doing for big strat ops because they're super boring to just press F1. Zoom your camera all the way out and look at what everyone's doing. The first thing that people do is um, interceptors buzz around at 200 kilometers. Now, this serves two purposes. It allows them to find things to tackle that are isolated, go in and get them. But it also gives the FC options of places to warp to. So if you don't have um, bookmarks on, on a grid, you can use your interceptors. You can tell your interceptors, give me a ping off this fleet or stay 200 kilometers away from me. You can even align your fleet to interceptors or to any any frigate, evil frigate or anything. So you've got a position to, to move around grid with. That gets harder if there's a lot of bubbles on field, but it's definitely a thing to consider. And the, the other thing you'll notice is if you fight PL, PL are the masters of this. You will never see a PL dictator until you try and escape. The moment you decide, right, we're losing this. We need to escape. Six dictors decloak out of nowhere and you bubble fight. Having your dictors um, 
And brave predictors tend to be naturally quite aggressive. They'll want to run at the enemy and bubble them. You don't need to bubble the enemy if they're fighting. You only need to bubble the enemy once they try and run. So the best thing you can do for your dictors is hide them from the enemy. If they don't know you've got them, it's going to just fuck them up all the more when they try and run away. Or when you try and run away and you need to defensively bubble yourself. Oh, that's clever. Is that not a brave doctrine? Do we not use that technique? Uh, absolutely. Well, we should use that technique. All our fleet dictors have cloaks for that reason. Because you sit them off gates, you sit them off your fleet cloaked. Now, what we don't do, maybe, is FCs don't coordinate with the dictors to tell them that's what's happening. I see a bunch of our uh, dictor pilots doing it, but yeah, like you said, there's no coordination. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, PL don't tell the dictor pilots what to do, they just know. Um, Brave, obviously, you've got to expect people might be new to dictors, so absolutely. Your, your job as FC is to understand all the pieces of your fleet and then use them as effectively as possible to, to win fights. And that really means telling people exactly what you want them to do. So what, what I do is, first thing I do is I go through all those fleet roles that I talked about earlier. I add them all to my watch list and I just memorize, oh, that chap's my dictator, that chap's my inti, that chap's my whatever. And tell them specifically what you want them to do. Again, with um, E-War as well. If you've got Vigils, tell them to follow the primary. If you've got Mawlesses, tell them to scan Res Damp Logi. And if you're not shooting Logi, if you're shooting DPS targets, tell them to optimal range damp the Logi. Just, just communicating. Um, normally in a Brave fleet, about 50% of the fleet will actually be in Doctrine ships. So if you call, whatever, a Caracal fleet, you get 30 dudes, you'll have about 15 people who will be in Caracals or Logi. The other 15 will be in miscellaneous ships. And it's easy to ignore them and just pretend they don't exist, but you're actually giving up a huge amount of value in your fleet by not telling your Ewar what to do, not telling your scouts where to be, not telling your dictors where to be. Is it um, ever considered or worthwhile um, maybe trying to FC by just taking a fleet out round two or three jumps and just getting used to like getting them to anchor on you and, and then just bring them back again without actually getting into a fight? Is that is that evident? Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's super good. Um, just take a quick roam out, like roam the pipe to head GP and up and down that twice, and you're done. Kitchen sink fleets are great for that because everyone loves a kitchen sink fleet. You literally just run up the pipe, run down the pipe. You don't even need to FC a kitchen sink fleet, but you just generally tell people a bit of guidance. That's really good if you want to just get some experience kind of calling the shots a little. Um, other thing I really cool. like is cormorants. Cormorants are good because you don't need to anchor. So you can practice combat probing, you can practice uh, coordinating with dictors, but it's not, you don't have to lodge, you don't have to anchor. So it takes off a lot of the um, things you have to do in a fleet. The other thing, which is incredibly bad practice that we do all the time, is... FCs, experienced FCs do all the roles at once, which is actually a silly way of doing it. Like, the person who's anchoring shouldn't really be calling targets. There's no reason to do it. You should have someone focus 100% of their effort on anchoring and 100% of their effort on target calling. Because if you're yeah, splitting 50 50, yeah. Exactly. Um, so if you're FCing, particularly if you've got uh, like someone backseating you, pick the thing that you, you think you're worse at that you want more practice on. Let's say you've, you've done loads of target calling in Cormorant fleets, but you've never really anchored before. Um, take out a Caracal fleet, ask someone else to, hey, just call targets, and you can uh, practice anchoring and put your full effort on it. Awesome. Thanks. That used to be the standard in AAA many years ago. The target caller and the FC were two different people. It's such a better way of doing it. Also, having your FC be your anchor is stupid because it's easier to headshot them. Like, this, like It's such a better way of running fleets. I agree. Uh, someone asked a question on comms about mumble etiquette. Um, yeah, so any kind of uh, fun fleet, any fleet really with less than 20 people, particularly if it's not time sensitive, I'd like to do in just open open flat comms like, like this now, so everyone could talk to everyone. Keep in mind, as an FC, always go to your own comms. Never try and FC a fleet from uh, Brave Standing because you want to control the comms. You want to be able to... Like, make sure the intel coming to you is coming to you, you're hearing it, make sure people aren't just chatting about the weather, and be in your own comms, communicate with your scouts, and kind of encourage people to speak. So a lot of times people maybe wouldn't wouldn't speak to you, they'll have a mic in, but they're not paying attention. If you hey, say, hey, Dictor, can you say what's on that gate? Get them verbally speaking to you. It makes, the more people you have feeding you intel throughout the fleet, because you can only see your grid, and really you're gonna have people on three or four grids. The more people you can have feeding you intel, the better decisions you're going to be able to make about whether you 
take a fight or not. Because, hey, maybe I can win this fight I'm fighting right now, but if there's another fleet coming up behind me, I want to know about that. So encouraging people to speak, really useful. Do you have scouts on a separate channel so they don't uh, muck up comms? I don't, personally. I like my scouts in the open. The only exception for that is uh, if I'm doing big strat ops with like lots of people, I'll have scouts in command channel. And that's more because I want to allow, if we're just moving fleets around, we're not in combat, I want to allow a main fleet to just chat and just like chill out while we're moving around. Um, but I need to talk to the the scout. Um, I, I, I like having all my intel, all my comms, all my discussion open in, in a main flat channel for anything else. Stratops, yeah. you'll have... Um, oh, I guess the other thing to say is uh, FCing... I, I don't know if were any of you guys in a rock save earlier today in Impasse? Yeah, yeah, I was there. So yeah. did you notice there was about three people calling uh, Capital F- FCing caps towards the end of it? Yes. It was getting a bit complicated. So that's all good. Basically, CJ was FCing them, and then two other people came in who had some... like What they were saying was valuable and things he needed to know. But because it was in open comms, it was a bit confusing about who was in charge, and it was a bit weird. That's normally what a command channel's for. You'll have one person speaking, like openly shouting to the fleet, and you'll have three or other people, three or four other people in there giving their advice, saying, oh, we should go, we should not go, we should keep harpies here, we should move harpies. And all that is super valuable, but separating that from the fleet makes it a lot clearer what the kind of instructions are. So that's why command channels are good. My observation is the uh, overall fleet size generally seems to make it important whether or not we need to subdivide the scouts and the logi away from the main channel. You agree? Yeah, yeah completely, completely. If you've got a lot of logi, um, they've got things to set up. Other thing we do on really big straddops as well is you'll have a new bro channel, a new bro ewall channel, and have an FC just kind of coordinating them. Kind of really s- simplifies things. Not leaving the new bros behind is a. Uh, is a, is a good move in this, because if you can convince 50 E-War guys to fly 50 E-War ships really well just by putting an FC and it comes with them, that's a huge advantage to your fleet. And it's a stupid question uh, on Mumble. If you're in the command wing, I mean, just the mechanics of making sure certain wings hear only certain things, what's the setup key-wise for that? Yeah, good question. So um, there's three kind of levels. Level one is what we're doing now. We're in a flat comms. We're just whispering to each other, whatever. Um, bigger fleets most fleets will have a command channel so in there um you'll see if you scroll right to the top of mongbol there's a fc command and there's a foxtrot command in there is there a foxtrot there isn't actually a foxtrot command that's crazy there's an echo command oh no there's a foxtrot foxtrot command so you have one key which is your whisper key which is the key i'm using now that would just speak to the command channel when you're in the command channel if you shout with your shout key which is this key, the whole fleet hears you. So normally when you're talking to the fleet, use a shout key, talking to the command channel, use a whisper key. The third setup, which is big complicated strat ups with multiple fleets, you also have a global key. So if we were doing this on brave comms, for example, let's say there were three fleets, we were all going out together, a bomber fleet, uh, like a tackle fleet and a, and, a, and a DPS fleet. We'd have our whisper key to talk to the, our command channel. You'd have a shout key to talk to your whole fleet and you'd have a global key, which would talk to every command channel. So that allows me to talk to my command channel so we can coordinate my fleet, maybe my scouts, maybe my second command, whoever else, uh, my main fleet so I can give them commands and, and tell them what to do and coordinate with other fleets with my global key. Does that make sense? It does. So the way we've got Mumble set up, shout hits command in the fleet, whisper just command. Yes. Yeah. Whisper's your current channel, um, which could be command or otherwise. Shout is the entire hierarchy and then you can set up global keys to talk to other group channels mumble's Thank really you. good for this and um, that's why we use mumble because of this clever hierarchy of, of comms thank you uh someone asked you a question is there a program or standard to help fc guide into a certain doctrine and engagement profiles uh yes there is it's not super formal right now different milders and brave have kind of gone through different levels of formalness uh, from like super formal to now we're pretty relaxed. The there are levels of FCing, so anyone can FC anything. But once you kind of join the FC program, you're given a level and you can SRP ships at that level. So I think the entry level is um, tower walls, cormorants, things like that. Next level is caracals, mowers, uh, jackdaws, and then after that is feroxes, hurricanes, then 
battleships and then pretty much anything so you kind of progress through those things in terms of how to fly them uh is a matter of probably the best way of learning that is talking to people like Look in Pfeiffer, have, have all our doctrines in Pfeiffer, have all the enemy doctrines in Pfeiffer, look at what their strengths and weaknesses is, and then when there's things you don't understand, ask, ask FCs. Ask people you trust um, to kind of describe what they did and why they did it. And, and even in your fleet afterwards, get people you trust to kind of tell you what, what you think, what they think about what you did, whether you made the right calls. Because honestly, it's really, you have to make a lot of decisions quickly but the more you do it, you'll see there's certain patterns and these decisions are repeated and they get easier and easier every time you run a fleet. The, the only way to learn is to run lots of fleets and be constantly self-evaluating yourself. Uh, there's a question. It must be hell FCing in super tie-dye conditions. Um, it's actually easier FCing in tie-dye because everything moves slower. It's fucking boring, but it's way easier. One of the hardest things in, about FCing, uh, particularly complicated fights, is there's so much information happening at once, it's hard to make the right decisions. In tie-dye, you've got all the time in the world, so you just call your target, you can slightly tweak your line so that you've just got that perfect arc to intercept the bad guys. Um, FCing in, in tie-dye is easier. You had one That's more question goes. about that. That's the same for them as well, though, isn't it? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> But then it's a, a matter of its decisions, not just execution. Because there's kind of two things to FCing, right? There's the actually making the right decision. So kind of quarterback afterwards in Arch Command discussing. Uh, so, sorry, there's, there's sitting in Arch Command afterwards and saying, oh, we should have done that in this situation. And there's actually doing it in that situation. And they are very different. That's why I don't really um, necessarily trust everyone who's given advice about FCing. Because the concept of thinking about it and the concept of doing it in a fight they're, they're very different. Sorry, you said you had another question? You had an adequate rules question above that. Uh, so what was the, the question I missed? Bucket, buckets from Ramrod said, any type of etiquette rules in standard fleet fights, e.g. don't headshot the FC immediately? Um, yeah, good question. So etiquette rules are interesting. There is that. What I try and keep in mind personally is what you're trying to accomplish with a fight. So in GE, someone brings 20 Tower Wars. That is absolutely the kind of shit we want them to bring every day because I want to fight 20 Tower Wars every day. So in that case, don't undock 50 Caracals because that's no fun. Try and keep your numbers down. Don't headshot. Um, be chill, 7 0 local afterwards. But the point of that isn't to be nice necessarily because this is Eve. We're not about being nice. It's to get them to come back the next day so you can practice on them. In a, in a proper fight, an important fight, or if you need to be somewhere and someone's stopping you, or there's a gate camp, headshot all day long. Headshot is an incredibly effective tactic. Other thing you can do as well is, um, like I said earlier, if we got 30 people in fleet, we got 15 of them in E-War, get all your Mauluses to scan res damp the enemy FC. They sit 100 away from them, they scan res damp the enemy FC, that guy takes 15 seconds to lock a target now. It's really fucking hard to call targets when you can't lock anybody. And unless he's a really good FC, he won't have a second in command ready to take over for him. So loads of stuff you can do like that, which just fucks people up. Uh, Therese is asking, uh, how does he apply to the FC program? Um, so b best thing to do, take a couple of fleets out. So send a ping um, either by yourself or ask someone to backseat you. Send a ping out. Once you've done a few fleets, message Shattered Armor, our military director. First thing he's going to ask you is, have you done any fleets recently? And say, yeah, I took a jackdaw roam out yesterday. Here's a battle report. And I took a whatever roam out. And here's a battle report. That's it. You don't have to be good. You don't have to have won. You could have just whelped them. But show some activity. Talk to Shadow Dharma. And he'll invite you in. He is so eager to get more FCs in. Uh, you wouldn't believe. What's the preferred oh, way to fire in a AR? Oh, sorry. One at a time, please. What's the preferred way to file an AAR? Ah, uh, good question. So, as I said earlier, through Brave's kind of history, we've had different levels of formalness. It used to be the case back in the day that all junior FCs had to file AARs after each fight. We used to post them on the Reddit. Um, what I do now, what I like to do is simply discuss it. So once you're in the FC program, um, there's channels, so, or, or even that cop fleet command that I mentioned earlier. Post them in there, post a battle report, what you did, what you think went well and what you do better 
if you did it again next time. And honestly, posting it's not that important. The most important thing is that you have evaluated your performance and made those kind of learning observations. And that might just be simply, fuck me, target calling is really complicated. It's just the mechanics of it. Um, pressing the X and clicking the thing while you're anchoring is hard. So your lesson there is just like practice that, like find opportunities to target call, ask people to, if you can target call in their floats or anchoring or whatever. Because honestly, no matter who's FCing, as long as you're not, as long as you're not an idiot, um, having someone anchor for you or having someone target call for you is easy because the FC can still make the decisions of call Logi, call DPS or get closer or get further away. And you're just practicing the mechanics of doing it. Um, that's really useful. Uh, there was another question there that happened at the same time. Yeah, how do you set a thing out? Oh, good question. Good question. Let me link the thing. If you go to that site, which is ping.bravecollective.com, sign in. You can send a ping to social. Uh, anyone can do that, and you can get some dudes. Pick an empty comms, uh, create a fleet. Oh, if you check my MOTD, there's a screenshot of how to set up a fleet advert. So you just tick all those boxes in that way, um, give it a name, you're good to go. Thank you. It's worth uh, giving it a couple of minutes to let people come into your fleet after you ping. If you leave it too long, people might get bored. Uh, I like to kind of keep fleets kind of quick and to the point, not a lot of dilly-dallying, just to, to keep things a bit more concentrated. Any other questions? Yeah, quick one. So uh, one or two fleets I've done before, I kind of had an issue with people listening, um, especially during kind of high value kills. Um, people just lose concentration, fall off anchor, don't follow targets. How do you keep everyone focused and just in the game? Yeah, really, really. Um hard skill that's one of these kind of soft skills about FCing. um you need to kind of assert your presence the, the reason you go to your own comms is so that they're your comms now one thing you will have is when when you join the fc program you get mumble privileges so you can mute people so one thing i can do for example is, is this so i've set priority speak <clears throat> excuse me i set priority speaking now so um uh clack can you try and speak over me uh, so I'm speaking right now. Yeah, 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 him. yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you see there that, that you could hear me and not him? Yeah. So that's the best way of if people are spurging up your comms, put priority speaker on, you talk over everyone else. Um, this is also useful if you've got busy comms for potentially legitimate reasons, but you need to get intel from someone in there. Uh, you can't hear it. You can give them priority speaker. So that's one option. Uh, thing w which would normally happen in uh, global is FCs give themselves in the command channel all priority speaker. That's kind of a mechanical way to deal with it. Um, the better answer though is kind of the, the the soft skill, the actual presence in comms. So if people are are being bad, what I like to do is kind of ro rather than naming and shaming individuals, just generically call out the fact that hey guys, battle like battle comms. Just saying battle comms really helps people. Um, saying, hey, we're not aligning off this gate or you're not following primaries, just to kind of re like reiterate that you need to do things correctly. Hey, colleague, stop imitating Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys were in my Harpy fleet earlier today, the Rock Save, but as we were coming back from it, the alliance were just terrible. So every gate, I was c trying to convince people to get the alliance right, so align, warp, telling them why it's important. So, hey guys, if we all split DPS, so if we disengage now, we'll lose targets. Or if we're not aligning quickly, we move through space slower. So telling people why you're trying to make them do things, why you're trying to make them not warp off on their own or whatever, like it's either dangerous for them or it's dangerous for the fleet or you lose content because of it. And, and, and the final thing I like to do after a fleet is find the people in your fleet who were really helpful to you. So guys who gave you good intel, if your scouts did well, if your dictors did well, whatever. There's always someone who's done good stuff. And just call them out by name and say thanks. Just say, hey, Vargren, fucking, as always, great job scouting there. Or, um, hey, new bro in the Mollus had never in a fleet before. You didn't die. Awesome work. That's really hard to do. And that encourages people to want to try and contribute to a fleet a bit more. What dictates a fleet to be an SRP fleet or not? 
Um, it's very complicated mechanics that are based on your uh, FC rank. So there's you, you've got a strat up uh, fleet, which is any fleet that has a strategic objective, normally bashing or defending something. Um, and then in addition to that, you've got your level as an FC. As, a, as an FC. Once you're in the FC program, any fleet you can SRP dictors and a few other things. I'm probably slightly out of date with my knowledge of the specifics there, but Shad will explain that because he loves that stuff. End of the day, if you're not taking the piss, most stuff gets SRP'd. That sounds question. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so uh, there's been fleets where we've had, you know, over a thousand or twelve hundred people on Mumble all at once, but us being under the same like wing, kind of like say we have Logi and we have other like Logi, E War, Recon, and we got the other wings just filled up, but we still have other channels right above it. Like say we're under Foxtrot and they got Echo, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha, and all those other ones open. Is there a channel to where it goes global to like say the main military director wants to go across all those channels but not shout to every one of those wings but they, they only want to shout to the fcs of those uh no so for kind of two reasons so your fleets max out at 255 people so if you've got hundreds of people you're probably in different fleets anyway now yeah. what would normally happen for these big strat ops is before they start the person in control what goons would call the sky marshal or whatever um, would maybe call everyone into one com so they can address the entire, like the entire fleet or the entire set of fleets at once. So you can say, "Hey, we're going to do this, blah blah blah." Here's a plan. But honestly, in that situation, when you're talking about multiple full fleets, the guy who's actually in control, the guy who's actually running the show, probably isn't talking to fleet members all that much at all. That that's delegated. So you'd have one person maybe running their fleets and normally the way it would work in brave is you'd have the person in control of everything running a fleet um probably with two or three other people anchoring and target calling for him and he'd be shouting to the other fcs in the other fleet command channels and then you would relay that down so for example um rock says if we split into different comms you'd have the cap fc saying hey we're going to go in at this time we're going to go these guys first um, but that wouldn't be shouted to both fleets. It would just be shouted to the, the fleet commander of the subcaps. And the subcap gotcha. guy would, would relay that. So it's gotcha. actually gotcha. super fun. I love those kind of fleets when you're coordinating with other FCs. But they're quite hard because you've got three people talking to you at once. Potentially you've got your fleet, the people in your command channel, and the global keys. Yeah, I just didn't know how that worked because there's been fleets where I'm, you know, I'm hearing two FCs talking yeah. at once. And I'm like, what? Like, I know who I'm supposed to be listening to, but it just gets confusing because if you're not really paying attention too much, you might get thrown off and do the other one. <laughs> the coalition fleets as well, you'll either be in test. Um, so we do a lot of coalition coordination through Discord. So there's Discord, or, Discord audio channels and yeah, test comps. So you've really got two mumbles open and Discord. Um, it gets crazy. That's why Tide is good in those situations. It just chills it down a bit. <laughs> Cool. And any other final questions? Awesome. That is almost an hour exactly, which is a pretty, pretty neat time. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, if you guys have any questions, absolutely feel free to message me on Slack. Always happy to talk FCing. Uh, please join that COP Fleet Command channel. Um, really, really good resource there. Uh, please take out some fleets. Let's get us some more content creators. Thank you so much. Awesome.